Hi, I'm Chad with Turf Organics, and today we're going to go over the best lawn program for your St. Augustine lawn. If you find any of this information useful, please consider liking and subscribing. I would really appreciate it. Let's get right into the video. So the way I've broken up the lawn program is into six rounds. And the reason I've done that is because six applications is really adequate for what you need for the lawn. So as you see here on the calendar, I've broken them down into two months at a time. Round one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now the reason it's two months at a time is because it really depends on your location. Now really the best way to know when to do applications is soil temperatures. Now I know not everybody's going to do that. This is a really good broad program to figure out when you need to start thinking about doing these applications. Now the reason they're two months at a time is because it's going to be very different from South Florida to North Florida. We will use January and February as an example. Now, if you're in South Florida for the round one application, you're going to be wanting to look at the beginning of January. If you're in Central Florida, you will be end of January to beginning of February. And if you're in North Florida, probably looking mid-February to end of February. That'll be a really good way to understand how I've broken these rounds down. Now also, I'm not gonna recommend any brand of any of the products I'm gonna say. I'm just gonna tell you when and what to apply. And of course, depending on soil and a bunch of other factors, you need to kind of determine those by playing around with your lawn and knowing your lawn yourself. Now, of course, I always highly recommend getting soil tests from your local ag extension agency, and that'll tell you exactly what your lawn's going to need. But this is a very broad program that as you go, you can tweak over time using less or more, it's depending on the results in your soil. But this is a really good place to start because it can get really overwhelming. So this is just a very simple breakdown of what you need to do with your St. Augustine lawn. We're gonna start here in the red is round one. So that will be your January and February applications. Now, what you usually be applying in this time is your potassium in pre-emergent. Now, potassium is gonna help feed the roots during the cold time to get, help prepare the grass for the hot summer. And the pre-emergent will help with the timing of the weeds. Now, usually it's best to do it in February uh, rather than January. So maybe what you can do is, is in January do the potassium, in February do the pre-emergent. Now 55 degrees soil temperature is around when these weeds like crabgrass start to germinate. And that's usually around February again in South Florida and North Florida, they'll be different. Um, but depending where you're at, Early February to end of February is going to be a good time to do your pre-emergence to help prevent some of these nasty spring and summer weeds. Now round two, your March and April application is going to be your spring fertilizer. This is going to wake your lawn up, get your lawn thick and green and getting it ready for the summer. So this is going to be the big fertilizer. Now, of course, in North Florida, I absolutely recommend April because we do get some March, March freezes that can come in. And if you apply this heavy spring application, we get some cold temperatures, you can do some damage and stress the lawn. So for my North and even Central Florida people, I'm going to lean more towards April. Um, my South Florida people, March, uh, end of March, you should be good to go. Uh, but there's, you know, no, no harm in waiting to April just to be sure. Now, what you're going to want to do there, a good heavy round of fertilizer. What I recommend is like a 24 to 11. It doesn't have to be exactly that, but you just want to make sure your nitrogens double your potassium. I always like to add a small percent of phosphorus, but I would never go above 2%. If you can't find the middle two number, a zero is okay, but get something close to a 2211, and I do not recommend going anything above 20 on the first number, which is the nitrogen. Now, of course, always make sure you use a slow release blend. That is extremely important. Round three and four here in the middle are actually going to be the exact same for nutrients wise. Now, this is when the summer temperatures start to come in and it gets really hot. Now, your lawn should be greening up and starting to get nice and thick from your big heavy round um, in round two. So round three and four, what you're going to want to do is heavy micronutrients, humic acids, iron, things like that. This is what I call spoon feeding. You don't need to throw out a bunch of more nitrogen or things like that. You just want to be giving the lawn the micronutrients, which I call the vitamins 
for the turf. Now things like what a lot of people like to use is like an ironite or a milorganite. That will be great to do in your round three, in your round four. That's just gonna keep the lawn going and feeding, help keeping it green, but you don't need to keep doing heavy rounds of fertilizer every time. That's how you build up thick thatch in St. Augustine turf. And of course, if you can add humic acid with every application, that's highly recommended. A humic acid is a great product that we use in all of our programs and I recommend to everybody to use in their lawn as well. Now, what you want to think of humic acid is, is a catalyst for these nutrients. You don't want to use just humic acid alone. You want to use these fertilizers with the humic acid. The humic acid will complement your, your lawn program and complement the nutrients you're putting down, allowing the plant to pick up more of it. I'll make a video in the future more about humic acid because it does get very sciency, but that's what I want you to think of humic acid being is a catalyst for the nutrients that you're applying. Now round five is where it gets different again. What you're going to want to do is this is your last round of another big boost fertilizer. So you're going to want to kind of repeat the spring process at a lower application rate. You want to reduce the application rate to about 50% of what you did in the spring, but you want to use a similar fertilizer like another 2211. That'll be the last big round of food before the temperatures start cooling off to make sure that the, the grass is nice and thick and healthy and ready for the cold winter that's coming. Also, this is your time to do another round of pre-emergence for your winter pre-emergence. Again, remember from North Florida to South Florida, it's different. South Florida will be applying later in October, where North Florida will be applying mid-early September. And this is going to help prevent a lot of the winter weeds that will show up in the lawn. And then round six, your November, December, is just going to be some potassium. Uh, North Florida, I recommend that's really all you need is just another good round of potassium. And that's feeding the roots, keeping the roots nice and, nice and healthy during the winter. Because you don't really need to add much more because that round five gave you nutrients. And when you use a slow release, that'll feed it all the way till January and February. So that's why you don't really need to do another heavy round of fertilizer. Now in Central and South Florida, where it stays warmer, what you're going to want to be doing is maybe adding some micronutrients in there like you did in round three or four because your grass doesn't go quite as brown and dormant as we do up here because we get some frosts and freezes. But if you're in North Florida, just stick with the potassium and let your round five be the last feeding that you do. Now that was a good basic rundown from round one through six of a whole year program of your nutrients. Now we're going to get into some pests and fungus. I'm just going to simplify this process. We're going to start with pests. Now what you can think of in for pest is your round three to five is going to be your most active pest round. Chinch bugs, sod webworms, spittle bugs, mole crickets. That's most commonly when you're going to see them. Again, you can see them later in the year depending where you're at. Um, in South Florida, you can almost deal with this year around. But your rounds three to five is when you're going to most commonly see pest issues. Now, what I recommend for homeowners is if you're the one doing all the applications and you're mowing the lawn, I would wait to see a pest issue before applying anything. Because since you're constantly monitoring the lawn and you're the one taking care of it, the best way is to follow IPM, which is Integrated Pest Management, and only applying what is needed. Now, professional companies apply preventatives is because they're not constantly there, they're not monitoring your lawn, so they wanna prevent these active issues before they start. But if you're always there and you're the one taking care of it, once you see a little spot of chinch bugs come up, you can treat it. You can treat that little area, get them under control, and you don't have to use pesticides over the whole lawn, which is what I highly recommend. I have videos on my channel going over all the lawn damaging pests. I highly recommend watching those. That way you know what to look out for when you're out mowing your lawn and you see a small spot and you can treat them there. But rounds three through five is when you're mo when pests are going to be most active. Rounds one, two, and six are going to be where you're fungus is going to come in. Now you can get some funguses in the summertime of course, um, but they're not nearly as extreme as your fall to winter funguses. We're going to get brown patch fungus in round one, two, and six. Once you get that fungus, you can treat it, but you're going to have those damaged spots till spring comes and the damage can grow out. So that's why it's important to really be on top of these funguses in the winter and brown patch fungus moves extremely fast and can do a fair amount of damage in the winter time. And I do have videos on brown patch fungus, so I highly recommend looking at those and seeing how to identify and treat that. But remember in rounds one, 
two, and six is when your fungus is going to come up. Now, of course, this is a really short and simple video on breaking it down. There's a lot more details and factors into it with mowing and watering. I highly recommend everybody to please watch more of those videos on our channel where I individually break those down. If I talked about all those in here, this would be an hour long video and I don't want it to be like that. This will be a great way to start because it seems so overwhelming on when do I do this? When do I do that? How many times do I fertilize? What's going on? And it can get extremely complicated. So this is just a very basic breakdown where you can make yourself a calendar knowing when you need to apply and then take the time to watch my other videos to get the details on what fertilizers to use, what fun what the fungus looks like, how to treat it, what do chinch bugs look like, how to treat those. But just know now that you have this chart, you can know when to look out for those things and when you need to fertilize your lawn. But I hope this is really useful. If you found any of this information helpful to you, please consider liking and subscribing, commenting. I really appreciate it. Y'all support is the reason I love making these videos and continue to do so. So thank you so much. I'm Chad with Turf Organics and everybody have a great rest of your day.